Dr. Desai, uh, I'd like to move along to get your views of technetium pyrophosphate scans and what the, um, the benefit is and also what the vagaries are that we're learning now. Yeah, so I, I think uh, uh, technetium uh, pyrophosphate scanning, bone scintigraphy, if you will, has really been a, 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 a really wonderful addition to the diagnostic armamentarium, uh, particularly for TTR amyloid. I think that what we uh, learned was that in many patients getting bone scans for other indications that occasionally the heart would light up. And I think what's become clear is that a large proportion of those patients who have positive cardiac uptake of technetium pyrophosphate in particular um, uh, are, are patients in whom there is important involvement by uh, cardiac amyloid. I think that the uh, early reports suggested that this testing was fairly specific for the diagnosis of TTR uh, amyloid. I think we're learning that a proportion of the cases um, with AL amyloid may also light up on that scan. Um, and so I think it's important that just having a positive scan doesn't in and of itself uh, confirm the diagnosis of TTR amyloid and we need to do the appropriate uh, investigations for serum light chains um, uh, in order to exclude a monoclonal protein that might be uh, also present in those patients with a positive scan. But I think the presence of a negative uh, workup for uh, serologic workup for amyloid uh, um, uh, with light chains uh, uh, and immunofixation and a positive technetium pyrophosphate scan really does uh, amount to a pretty compelling evidence for diagnosis of PTR amyloid and has been enough in some of the pivotal trials uh, in order to uh, initiate uh, therapy with drugs like Tefamidus. Right, um, Dr. Hanna, uh, with, with those words on technetium pyrophosphate scanning and comments that you made earlier, what, what is the prevalence of TTR? What is, what are we missing in you know particular um, cohorts that uh, have become a little more clear, be they a heart failure clinic or um, TAVR um, experience? Yeah, so as far as prevalence is concerned, the most important point I'll make is we don't know the true prevalence. Um, we don't know the true denominator of how many people out there have trans amyloid cardiomyopathy. However, there's certain cohorts that we've learned from. Um, there was a study in Spain that looked at um, patients with heart failure with preserved ejection fraction who were hospitalized with acute heart failure as an inpatient and those who had a wall thickness greater than 13 millimeters. I believe it was 13 or 14. Um, they decided to consecutively scan um, over 100 patients with this uh, increased wall thickness and acute on chronic FPEP and found that 13% of them actually came back positive. Some of them were confirmed with endomyocardial biopsy, but not all, suggesting that at least 10% of these hospitalized patients with FPEP who have some increased wall thickness actually are walking around with a diagnosis of ATTR cardiac amyloidosis. The TAVR study that you'd mentioned that Ron mentioned um, studied out of Columbia, they took consecutive older patients over the age of 65 who were coming for a TAVR evaluation. And they routinely did technetium pyrophosphate scans on these patients along with doing uh, lab work uh, to exclude AL. And they found that 16% of these patients, um, again, not all biopsy proven, but 16% of these patients had um, diagnostic criteria for a positive scan, suggesting that they have ATTR cardiac amyloidosis and they were wild type. Um, and I should say that in the previous study, I mentioned they were wild type. So I think that between the TAVR population coming in for evaluation, between the hospitalized patients with acute on chronic hepat, there you already see 13 to 16%. And what we don't know is in chronic outpatients with, you know, heart failure preserve ejection fraction, um, you know, what percentages. But there, you know, a lot of the reason these trials, as Dr. Desai said, may have been unsuccessful and heart failure with preserved ejection fractions, it could be up to 10% of these people, some pundits will state, uh, could have this diagnosis. 